Hello, I've got an exciting video for you today. We're going to be taking a look at the Thermalrite TLB14 uh, computer cooling fan. It looks like it's going to be a great value proposition, so I hope you join me on this video. First, a little bit of spec information. It's pretty much a bog standard 140 millimeter class fan, uh, 0.11 amps, uh, 1500 maximum RPM, 27.6 decibel rating by their readings. 85.2 CFM, sorry there should not be no pressure there, that is a little typo on my part. 2.35 millimeters of H2, that's actually a pretty reasonable amount of H2O given the other features of this fan, and a fluid dynamic bearing. Now we're on to the tests. The first test is the case simulation test. It's taken at several key measurement locations that specify certain size cases or usage applications. The first one is the six inch mark. This represents a short throw distance, like having fans at the bottom of a case blowing up towards your GPU, or having a very compact mini ITX style case. Think of a case that can only hold about a 120 millimeter or 140 millimeter class fan in its length. And again, this assumes a front to back airflow or blowing up from the bottom of the case towards a GPU, something along those lines, uh, imagery. And then we have the nine inch mark. This is your compact towers. Something along the lines of um, being able to fit a ATX style motherboard and GPU of equivalent length, but no extra space beyond that. So it'd be like having 220 millimeter class fans. Then we have the 11 inch mark. This is your full towers. Would be able to fit roughly 320 millimeter class fans or a 360 AIO or RAD. And um, then we have the 14.5 inch mark. This would be like your really large towers, something like the Fractal Design Torrent, um, where it can fit 340 millimeter class fans in the bottom. So, depending on what size case you plan on buying or that you already own, is what data met point you actually want to play pay. Uh, closest attention to. So all this uh, doesn't mean much until we start comparing against other things, and the first comparison I'd like to make is against my control fan. It is based three parts A12X5 to one part A14, blending them together to get a composite, I'm calling it a 130 millimeter class fan, where fans that are over top of that line I'd be considered uh, good, great, better, extreme, the best, you know, that kind of thing. And if they're underneath it, they could still be considered okay if they're close enough, but if they drop away too much, I would consider them very poor performers and no longer good for this type of application. Sorry, this graph does not have units. Um, it's something I'm adding to newer graphs. I just want to talk about that. The bottom here is length in inches from the front of the case or where that front fan is, so it's blowing away from it. And the vertical axis is air speed in meters per second. So we can see that the TLB14 is doing really well. It's staying right in line with my control fan. So it's looking like it would be a great pick uh, to be as a case airflow fan. And comparing against it, I've got the TLB12, which is its 120 millimeter cousin, brother, whatever you want to call it. And it's not performing nearly as well, but I'd still call it an okay category in this noise normalized test. Next, we're looking at at 100% PWM fan signaling. And we can see that the TLB12 does outperform the other fans at the sixes mark, but as the length of the case increases, it tends to drop away more steeply from the other ones. Actually, it's more in line with the control fan, but even at the 14.5 inch mark, it just can't keep up. While the TLB14 is doing really well. And this is my journal findings that 140 millimeter class fans tend to do better in bigger cases while 120s tend to do better in smaller cases. Next, how does this fan compare against other fans I have tested? Well, one of my top picks is the Tough Fan 14 Pro. I put money where my mouth is, and I have installed two of them inside my current computer case. Um, so I'm kind of doing longevity testing with regard to those fans there. And so the TLB14 is sitting right here in the middle, so it's not exemplary when you compare it to guess against other fans in this noise normalized result. But it's certainly not bad. So I'd call it pretty middle of the road and even like better than adequate. So I'd call it pretty good. But do note that as the case gets larger and larger, there are other fans where in bigger cases it's more important to make sure you've got excellent airflow. And so there are other fans that may be better suited to your needs. 
at 100% pedo infrared signaling, it, it drops back a little bit. And if we take a look at the data points, we see that the B14 is only spinning at 1,500 RPM, while most of the other fans are spinning a little bit faster. The only one that's close to it is the A15, which is based off of the uh, A14 regular, not the 3,000 RPM one, which is on this graph. And then the other keynote is to take a look at the noise rating. So for similar noise levels, so one thing to know with uh, decibel ratings is it's an exponential system. So every 10 decibels is a doubling in noise volume, so making it twice as loud. So one decibel is hard to notice, but once you're at talking like three, you can start to notice it pretty easily with your ear. So the Mobius is only, uh, 140p is only one decibel louder. So it is a better pick. It pushes more air. So uh, you will have a decision to make in terms of what performance, noise level, and cost you're willing to spend on fans. Next, how is this fan doing at the 9-inch mark? Air speed versus decibel rating. So air speed is vertical, decibel rating is horizontal, and like we previously said, decibel is an exponential system, so every 10 decibels is a doubling in noise volume. And I have a subsample selection of fans that I decided to pick for this. And we can see that the B14 is basically sitting right smack dab in the middle. It's a great place for it to be. Again, it isn't quite in that exemplary category. The um, Silent Wings Pro 4, or 4 Pro, is sitting right at the tippy top, but I found some resonant frequencies within it. But it was also tested at every 5 PWM fan signal, while most of these other fans are every 10. So it's hard to know if there aren't harmonics in the other fans, as they weren't tested exactly the same way with regard to that. But right now, my top pick is the Tough Fan 14 Pro, because it has a much smoother line without those harmonics. But again, didn't test it exactly the same way. Pull configuration. Next, how does this fan do blowing air through a CPU air cooler? My cooler is the Noctua U12A. It has a fairly high thin density air cooler. It's trying to get a quasi-static uh, application. Uh, anyways, back to the testing. The red line here is my control fan. Again, based three parts A12A drive to one part A14. We got the B12 sitting on here, where it follows my control fan very closely, while the B14 is outperforming them all in terms of RPM versus airspeed. When we take a look at noise versus that airspeed, um, they're all very close. The B12 is a little bit lagging behind. Uh, the control fan is in a little bit better situation than the B14, so the B14 is a little bit noisier than my control fan, but it overall seems to be doing fairly well. But how does it compare against other fans that I've tested? Well, right at the tippy top of the graph, we have the Tough Fan uh, 14 Pro, and it's kicking butt. A little bit down, a little bit above the middle, we have the TLB14. So, noise normal results, it's doing really quite well. Uh, if you're wondering what these wattages are with an airspeed, I did a bunch of testing on my CPU or cooler, it's in another video, if you want to check it out. And this is accurate to within uh, 5 watts for my particular CPU, the 11700K, and for this particular cooler, the U12A. If you don't have either of those, the wattages will, will not line up directly with the air speeds. So then you just use it to kind of scale. Well, okay, I need, I want a better fan, so you pick a fan higher on the graph. Anyways, let's keep things going. Abbott at 100% PWM fan signaling. The TLB14 is actually punching above its weight class, and I say that because it's spinning at only 1,500 RPM, and yet it's competing for the most part with fans spinning at closer to 2,000 RPM. There are a couple exceptions, like the AL140 version 2 is a very similar RPM, but it's also significantly noisier. But it is moving more air. So this is where the blade design comes in for being optimized for noise, silence, or kind of a mishmash of the two, all the above, to get sort of your best ratios overall. But it's sitting in a nice crowd with the P14, the Mobius 140P, the Lightwings 140, and the F14. These would be all fans that are very similar in terms of the characteristics. And how about in terms of noise value? 
Again, once again, it's sitting right there in the middle. It's a great place for it to be. A matter of fact, it's better than the Silent Wings 4 Pro 140, which is sitting behind it. While the Tough Fan 14 Pro is still sitting in that top spot, which is why that Tough Fan 14 Pro is what I consider the best all-rounder, but it is a more expensive fan. So the TLB 14 is actually doing really well, especially considering its price, which we'll get into in a little bit. Next, we're doing CFM testing. CFM testing is my least favorite type of test because it's basically a scientific exercise. You blow air down a tube, you measure the airspeed of that, and you know the radius uh, size of the tube. So you're able to calculate a volumetric flow rate. It doesn't tell you how good the fan is in a case application. It doesn't tell you how good the fan is going to be blowing air through a radiator or heatsink. It just tells you how much volume of air the fan can blow. So now that that disclaimer is out of the way, how does it do? Well, it's straight up in line with my control fan. No surprise. Oh, the control fan here is based solely off of the A14 from Noctua. So it's basically perfectly in line. Where it'll deviate is when we take a look at how noisy it is for that. And it's sitting right in line with the A14, which is a great place for it to be because I found the A14 to still be a very competitive fan despite it's given age. It's a fairly older fan at this point. Noise numerous results comparing them. Right there, the B14 is right in the middle. It's outperforming the likes of the F14, and the NFA14 is a little bit behind it as well at that given noise value. There are fans better than it, like the P14S Redux. The NFA15 ended up performing slightly better than it. And the 3000 RPM version, the IPC, of the A14 is outperforming it as well. Now looking at the TLB14 at 100% PWA fan signaling, uh, it is sitting right in line with the NFA14, which is, again, a great place for it to be. They have very similar noise levels and very similar RPMs. It is outperforming the uh, Unifan SL Infinity 140, although the Infinity is a little bit quieter, but it is a more expensive fan, and it's a little bit behind the Arctic F14, and of course there are much higher performing fans that are sitting way up there. Next up is noise versus CFM. CFM is vertical, noise is horizontal. And once again, we see that the TLB14 is basically sitting right there in the middle of the pack. It's just lacking a little bit on that high end of RPM. I did see that there was an extreme version of the fan. I'm looking at trying to acquire it to really put it through paces, but right now this is what we have. And so it's doing okay. It just doesn't have that same top end that most of these other fans have that can just speed up and run a little bit faster. So if you need or pushing the absolute limit, right now the pick is basically the NFA14 3000 IPC and it just has the longer legs. But you do pay for that with incredibly high noise levels. Now onto value proposition. The TLB14 is a $12 fan. So that puts it into a relatively inexpensive category. Uh, the limit, upper limit for what I consider inexpensive is $18. So it is well within that. So given its given performance, it sits right up there among the best value fans, especially at the six inch mark. Now there are other fans that are overall better values, but uh, value, isn't actual performance. It is performance per dollar. So if you are on a really tight budget, you can't really go wrong. But if you do have a little bit more extra money to spend, um, it may be worth it to go with a slightly more expensive fan that delivers those higher performance values while still offering that good value. At the 11 inch mark, it continues to hold on. It is still an excellent value, especially even at 100% p fan signaling. But like the Arctic F14, it's just a slightly better value of it. But the king is still the TLG12. So we're going to keep moving on. And CFM testing, it is sitting right there at the top as well. The Storm T3 is now up in the running. But these um, F14 and TLB14 are sitting right at the top, making them excellent value picks for your computer build. And if you need to slap one of these to a com computer heatsink, uh, know that they are still pretty good. The B14 is sitting right up there at the top and uh, being a good value uh, fan for a cooler. Again, it's not quite at the tippy top in that value proposition, but it's offering a good value while still 
performing fairly well. And last is my raw data. This data does belong to me. If you want to use it for your own personal use, you may do so. But if you're going to use it in any sort of written publication, journal, anything like that, that you could earn income, I do ask that you reference me in my channel because I'm the one who generated the data. With this level of granularity in my detail, in my data collection, it takes around one and a half to two hours to generate it, plus extra time to update graphs, charts, make PowerPoints, presentations, write a basic script, film, and of course, edit. That takes all sorts of extra time. So I do appreciate that. Um, given that piece of information, if you got ways that I can improve my videos, I'm always looking for constructive criticism if you're just going to say you suck. I don't need to hear it and I'm going to block you. But if you're actually going to say, hey, what you're doing is pretty good, but these things you can work on to make it better, I'm all for that because I'm here to actually try to make this channel self-sustaining as opposed to a drain uh, because that's my given goal. Uh, anyways, if I really appreciate it if you would join me on Patreon or join me as a YouTube member. It would really go a long way because I do have future plans for this channel. Building a little test chamber, a better equipment, noise equipment for recording the data, cameras, everything, I don't know. Anything and everything, mostly focusing on test equipment first before uh, improving video quality from where we are right now. Uh, anyways, uh, I do appreciate it. You made it this far in the video. I hope to see you next time here on Computer Tech More, and have a great day.